Welcome back. You're tapped in here with Grimy Raider Dave on a Tuesday evening. We are dropping a fantasy draft selection episode. Tonight's show pertains to the draft league that I'm competing in with 31 other league members. This league's been around for many, many years. It's very competitive. A huge shout out goes out to my longtime Raider brother, Bolero. He invited me to participate in this league. He's got the Las Vegas Raiders. He's picking for them. I'm picking for the Indianapolis Colts. That's who I've been assigned to. Now, currently, we're still drafting. Players are still falling off the board as we speak. So as each round closes, I'm going to drop a selection show for each round leading up to the NFL drafts. So if you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button, tap that bell so you get notified for round two because round two is coming up tomorrow. Sub up, dial it in, and stay tuned, baby. All right, so let's set this off, man. So tonight, round one, Round two all the way to seven will follow leading up to the NFL draft. Also, there's an undrafted segment. So members will be selecting from the undrafted free agent pool at the end of the draft as well. So I want to keep you posted for that. So it's going to be a full, thorough draft moving forward, man. I'm real excited. So let's just jump right in. First things first, I'm going to pull up these trades, man, because uh, right here, I think it's important that you see how these trades went down the last two months. Uh, there's been a lot of negotiations, so I, I actually joined about two months ago. So Miami, you can see right there, they traded with the New York Giants. So they're picking at four and five. They keep their number five overall pick, and they obviously traded away quite a bit of capital there to move up one spot. So uh, Miami was pretty active. Like I said, they offered me plenty of picks, but I, I've declined on a lot of trades due to the fact that my draft picks are kind of spread out. And I kind of know exactly where I want to line things up, and I'm just not ready to make those moves right now. Maybe I wish I would have traded up in the in the second round, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. But um, but just want to see you to see how these trades went down so there's no confusion because what's going to happen is you're going to be like, wait, you know, why is the Niners not picking at number 31? Well, that's because they traded with Denver right there um, in the C column. So, you know, feel free to take a look at that. So what we'll do is we're going to jump right into the first round here. So right here we have the first round all laid out right here. Now on the left-hand side is the player rankings. Now that is according to Lance Zierlein from NFL.com. Those are his rankings on the left-hand side. My buddy and I, we both are on the same page when it comes to Lance Zierlein. We do like his assessment, his scouting reports. Um, don't always follow exactly what he says, but I do like what he puts out there. I like his evaluations. Um, I think he's very thorough, and there's a reason he's working at NFL.com. But once again, you know, I don't agree with everything he says, but we like him as a gauge as far as how he ranks uh, undrafted players. Um, so, um, and then you got the player name, the school, their grades. Those are Zerline's grades as well. And then you have the positions, their class, and then right there on the right, they have the taken column. So that's where they went, their overall um, selection right there and then we put the team names right next to the uh, the slots there so you can line everything up it just looks crisp also highlighted there is the Raiders in gray and in those highlights is number 12 and number 19 so you can see CD Lamb wide receiver from Oklahoma goes to the Raiders number 12 overall and they also get Justin Herbert at number 19 overall now um, real quick on CD Lamb I'm a fan of him I like CD Lamb you guys already know I'm a big fan of Henry Ruggs I think he's a top 10 pick I think he's the best wide receiver in this draft my buddy knows that um, I'm sure he thought long and hard about Henry Ruggs because he and I talk every day and uh, but once again I it's not anything against CD Lamb I like CD Lamb I've been a fan of him all year However, Henry Ruggs grew on me. I see a for sure thing right there with Henry Ruggs. I think he's one of the best pass catching wide receivers out there. I think he's a game changer, ultimate playmaker. I'm all over it, man. I'm all over it with Henry Ruggs. I'd take him 10th. I'd take him in the top 10 for sure, man. I'm a fan of the dude. I'm going to leave it at that. But I do like the pick of CeeDee Lamb. I'd be stoked if the Raiders got CeeDee Lamb. But, um, Justin Herbert, I think right there, he had to take Justin Herbert's a value pick. Justin Herbert's expected to go in the top 10. Um, I'll give you my quarterback rankings real quick. Of course, I like Joe uh, Burrow. Of course, I like Tua Tagovailoa. Of course, those are the... 
I would take either one of those guys over any quarterback in this draft. However, my favorite quarterback after that is Jordan Love. Then comes Justin Herbert, and then comes Jalen Hurts. Those are the three I'm kind of keying in on if the Raiders were to go to a draft a quarterback. Now, Justin Herbert at 6'6", 230 pounds. That's a big man. He can run. He'll extend plays. But what impressed me with Justin Herbert was the fact that you know, he was throwing the ball low and away at the Senior Bowl. Some nice NFL-type throws. Uh, once again, with the measurables and all that, he's got the size. And not only that, he'll use his legs. So, uh, 2018, he was lights out, looked like a top five pick. You know, I'm sure he's still going to go top 10 this year. But right there, if he falls to 19, you take Justin Herbert. So, uh, let's get into what I've been kind of talking about all year. And this is one thing I really wanted to point out is the offensive offensive line in this, in this class, man. Right here, you got... Uh, you got four offensive tackles that went top 10. That's something I've been kind of saying throughout the whole year, wanting to, you know, this kind of lines up. We have six offensive tackles go in the first round. We have seven offensive linemen go total in the first round. So I think that speaks volumes for these tackles, their talent level, their measurables. I mean, these guys look like for sure thing. I mean, you look at Tristan Wirfs, he looks like a for sure offensive tackle, like one that's going to do damage in this league. I mean, from Makai Becton, Jedrick Wills, and Andrew Thomas, man, it all lines up perfectly. Definitely um, guys that deserve to be selected in the in the top 10 and pretty much goes as expected. You know, my other question is wide receivers, though. How many wide receivers? Is there any wide receiver that's going to go in the top 10? I think there should be a couple. I mean, I think this wide receiver class is so deep that I really do think we might see a wide receiver or maybe even two go in the top 10. Remains to be seen. Now, as far as the cornerback position, you want to see how these guys line up. You know, four corners go in this draft. Cornerbacks do fall off the board. Typically, you don't see corners, any good corners, really after round four. I mean, most of the time, it's hard to find a corner late round that's going to be a, an impact player for a team. It does happen, but it's rare, uh, you know, I should say. So these guys do fall off the board pretty quick. And um, you'll see when we get to the second round, we got a handful of them there as well. So um, now safety, safety, uh, Xavier McKinney, man, I liked him all year. I pretty much like him. Doesn't surprise me that he's in the top 20 here, top 15, so to say. Um, but he's not my favorite safety. I do, when I watch safeties in this draft class, he stands out the most. Grant Telpit, I've never been really a fan of. I mean, I watched him as much as I could in the uh, the national title game. I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people were seeming to try to compare him to Derwin James. I, I hope I'm not wrong, but I don't see that. I don't. I never did see that, so I don't know where that came from, but uh, maybe just an exaggeration off what's been going on in the drafts the last few years uh, because Derwin James set that standard. I mean, he's pretty good, but I'm just saying, like, Derwin James was pretty lights out and pretty insane uh, type safety. I've never seen a safety play like that before. The way he took angles, I mean, he could take a two-yard angle on a running back and close him out. You know, so as far as Delpit goes, you know, I think he's right where he belongs, you know, maybe late first, early second round. Now, as far as the first round goes, I know we got a few teams in here that have a couple first round picks. I mean, as far as saying, like, who had the best draft so far in the first round? Give me your thoughts on that. You know what? Give me your thoughts on that. Who do you think had the best draft in this first round? Uh, you know, you don't have to be biased towards the Raiders. You know, my buddy would appreciate, a, you know, some love on the CD Lamb and a Justin Herbert pick. I rank them up there as far as having one of the better drafts. Um, Miami, of course. I mean, they got the two blue chip players right there. They get their quarterback. They get Jeff Okuda. Of course, they had to trade away draft capital. So I'll kind of exclude them for now because so far what I really like what I really like what team a team right now that I think is filling holes as necessary is the Jacksonville Jaguars. They get Derek Brown right there in the middle. They have a big need for defensive tackle. That you know, every it seems like the Florida teams, like whether it's the Marlins in baseball or the Jaguars in football, there it's like a fire sale every three years. They get good and it's like a fire sale right after that. So they're rebuilding as what they do best and building a defense. And you know, so what they do right here is they get Derek Brown and they get uh, Kenneth Murray. And I think those are slam dunk picks, you know, for that franchise to keep them stable if they're going to compete. Um, if they have that one hit wonder year and then all of a sudden have a want to have a fire sale three years from now and trade away uh, half their team. So I don't know. That was that's just a team that kind of stands out to me. As we get going in this draft, though, dude, man, I got some teams that are doing some damage in the second round, third round. So far, that's kicking off. So pretty fun stuff right there. Um, let me know what you think. Who do you think had the best draft? 
Um, we'll be back at it tomorrow with round two. When I pull out round two, of course, I'm going to have two picks in there. I'm going to give you a full report on both players I draft in the second round. So you get those reports to go with it as well. Um, and yeah, man, it's going to be pretty fun stuff while you're sitting around the house. I'll put it that way, man. So uh, so yeah, I've been in front of this computer for a while and the draft has been going a little bit faster, they say, than, than in past years, you know, because you got people that are going to work and stuff. Right now, we're pretty much shut down. You know, if not, people are working from home or they're out of work. And I'm one of those people right now, man, I'm out of work for a little bit until until this thing fires back up. So I look forward to getting back on here tomorrow and uh, hope everybody's doing well. One message, one last message before we close it out is we already know it, public health is number one. Do keep your distance, do your part, man. This thing's pretty serious, man. And let's just hope for the best and uh, we'll get through this, man. So I hope everybody has a safe day, man. Lock it in, let's do our part. I'll talk to you guys again. I'm out, peace. <laughs>